How y'all doing? You made it to the last day. Congratulate yourselves. That's the title of my talk, which means I don't have to read it out loud. Bam. Now I'm going to do it anyway. Finding a good fit, uh, a pun which will become apparent later in the presentation. Um, my name's Todd Harper, by the way, formerly of MIT's Game Lab, now of my parents' basement. <laughs> Just a little disclaimer, some trigger warnings for you. There's some kind of ugly fat shaming that I use as examples of why people are jerks in this talk. Um, it sucked reading it for me, so just warning you. And there's a second one right before I go into it, but just letting y'all know. Two, I think a lot of these issues are pretty, have universal impact, but uh, just to be clear, I am white, I am abled, I am cis, and I identify as a gay man, but a lot of this stuff changes depending on other aspects of your identity. For example, body image shit becomes a lot worse if you present or identify as a woman, uh, which I'm pretty sure the people who present or identify as a woman or non-binary in this room would be happy to tell you. <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so with that said, what's up? <laughs> just, I'm behind a lectern. Have y'all seen people who weigh like 100 pounds wearing this shirt, by the way? I don't want to judge those people. I don't want to police their fashion choices. But if, like, I think they should reconsider the context of doing that. And my feeling that they should reconsider the context of doing that is why I'm giving this talk. Uh, in a lot of ways, being fat and warning naughty language throughout entire talk, uh, being fat fucking sucks for a lot of reasons. If you've never been on a city bus and had a child point at you and go, Daddy, that man's fat, uh, it sucks. Uh, if, that person's, if that kid's father has then never said, yeah, that fucking sucks, for the record. Although, I got my revenge, because that happened to me before I left Boston. And I was sitting literally this far away. And I turned to him and went, really? I had nothing to lose. I was moving out of the city in four days. I'm never gonna see this person again. I, seriously, because like the kid is a kid. They can't help it, right? But as a parent, don't just go, yeah. I'm like, right, I'm sitting right here. I'm fat, not deaf. Thank you. Sorry, that was actually a little ableist. But let me rephrase. I'm fat, but I can hear you. I'm sitting right here. Thanks. Um, yeah, if you've never gone into an Abercrombie or Fitch or The Gap and had one of the people in the back see you walk in and do this shit. <laughs> seriously, I'm just like, Shade, I haven't even stepped into the thing that tells if I'm walking out with merchandise, y'all. I haven't even, like, you might have gloves that fit me. Stop judging me, I haven't even walked in yet. Uh, being fat means being different, right? Or different. And as all of us in this room know, being different sucks, right? If you're fat, that's bad. If you're a nerd or like games or identify as a geek, that's bad, right? If you're gay or lesbian or bi or pan or genderqueer or trans or anything else in the queer spectrum, that's bad, right? There's this baseline out there that is pretty much imaginary. And if you don't meet it, that sucks. But in fact, not meeting it in multiple ways means it sucks in entirely new ways that you would not have imagined before. Uh, Samantha Allen has this great bit that she uses in her gender studies classes about Halo, which I'm glad to repeat, where she uses it to teach dude bros why intersectionality is important. Right? Because in Halo, there are these things called skulls, and you can turn them on and they make the game more difficult. And if you turn certain skulls on in combination, they make the game exponentially more difficult, right? Like some skulls make other skulls worse because you've turned them on. So being fat, pretty bad. And, and like it can be a pretty bad experience, right? Uh, being I identify as gay, so being gay can be pretty bad. You know, being a nerd can be pretty bad, but then being all of them together is just a whole new level that I would have never conceived before. 
Um, so I was like, why, why are people like this? Um, one, don't Google this. <laughs> You're gonna find out why in a second. Don't. You'll be sorry. Um, and okay, again, trigger warning. And all of the triggery stuff is in like the next four slides. So if y'all need to leave the room or close your eyes, whatever, cool. So we got this stuff. This is a list of 10 reasons why fat people are terrible, which I think it was just straight up called that. <laughs> We've got, let's see. They think being fat is the sole reason for all the miseries in life, from acne to rejection from graduate school. I got into grad school, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> you can never go shopping with them because they won't stop asking questions like, does this shirt make me look fat? Does these shoes make me look fat? Does this room make me look fat? I'm like, no, it makes you look incredibly tiny. Um, just all sorts of stuff in here. Since when did fat become a dirty word? And I'm like, uh, probably the start of this list. You jerk. Um, this story is pretty fun. It was a sociologist who's like, I didn't quit smoking until people told me how awful smoking is. So if we want people to not be fat, we need to make them feel bad about being fat. Science! <laughs> Motherfucking science, y'all. This is Dan Savage. Ha! I already like you. I say Dan Savage, you groan. Give yourselves a round of applause. This is about apparently some nonsense state government is like, well, gay people don't live as long, so they shouldn't be able to get married. And he's like, well, okay, fat people don't live as long, so why don't we say fat people can't get married because that's not a false equivalence and I'm not a douche canoe. <laughs> uh, I don't even know where to start with this one. This was a story some blogger was recounting about a Boy Scout jamboree that didn't let a really like kind of overweight, out of shape Boy Scout go on a hiking trip, uh, which I was a Boy Scout in the 80s, and they were like, no, you're going because you're fat. <laughs> They're like, you need to get some hiking in you, lady. And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, and so, some fat rights activists were like, hey, that's kind of exclusionary and not really cool, and maybe you shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna read some of this guy's stuff. Sorry in advance. Okay, allow me to take this opportunity to say two things. One, cut the crap. Stop pretending you're so helplessly progressive and tolerant that you can't even fathom why extremely overweight and out of shape people might be excluded from extraordinarily strenuous and demanding physical activities. Two, cut the crap again. Nobody should be proud of obesity. It's not something to accept or include. It's not an ethnicity or a gender. I don't like throwing us a tiny bone, I guess. <laughs> it's not a disability, it's objectively negative. Objectively, science. Uh, and it is usually self-imposed. Before you implode in a fit of ungodly rage at my suggestion, implode? I guess I thought, think, yeah. Is that, how, is that how rage works now in 2014? I don't know. Uh, please understand what I'm actually suggesting. I'm not saying fat people should hate themselves. Nobody should hate themselves. I'm not advocating bullery, bullying or mockery. And that's where I just can't read the rest of this shit, <laughs> right? I don't think you should hate yourselves. I don't think people should hate you. I'm just going to really reinforce a culture that denies your personhood. Yeah, so like, why is being fat bad? It's not natural, right? Like blue whales. <laughs> they are so trim, y'all. They're the largest animals on the planet right now, and they give zero fucks. <laughs> they swim through the ocean when they're hungry, they do this. <laughs> when they're no longer hungry, they close their mouths. Uh, it's bad for you, it's not healthy. I'll maybe give a little ground on this. I've got some health problems related to my weight. I won't deny that. Uh, am I completely unhealthy? Pretty sure I'm okay right now. 
if anything happens, you're allowed to rush the stage. Just saying. <laughs> uh, it's disgusting. <laughs> and then there's this, though, which is what that guy was getting at in that last article. You're just lazy. You're just a slob. You're just gluttonous. You really like to eat. It's your fault. It's, everything's about it your fault. Oh, and has anyone had that bottom thing happen? Screw those people. <laughs> Do you know why I have a nice personality? People treated me like an asshole for so much of my life that it was become a nice person so that I could function or die. And I'm not kidding about that last part. It was learn to survive in a world full of jerks or just not be anymore. So don't compliment my nice personality. You can't compliment my hero though. <laughs> so it's your fault, right? You're just lazy. Uh, has anyone had the have you just tried not being fat question before? Doctors. Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. I, I'm going to say that I went to the doctor when I was in college for what I'm going to call a personal injury. Um, and it had nothing to do with my weight and everything to do with some other things. But uh, that doctor, when I came in to finish my treatment of antibiotics, then said, have you considered having people deliver food to your house and starting an exercise regimen, I'd really like to come in and have you come in and see me every three days for the next two months so that we can work on a weight loss program. I'm like, I just want to get my antibiotics done and leave. Uh, and that ambushing thing doctors do is real, happens all the time, and people who are overweight suffer huge medical problems because they are literally afraid of the medical profession. It's a thing, look it up. Uh, also, living proof. Right. I recently was in the hospital for an infection, and it turns out that I had super high blood glucose. Why? Because everyone in my family has been diabetic for like three generations. So I'm pretty sure even if I was half of this, it would have still been a thing. Uh, but it, <laughs> you never want to hear a doctor say, your blood glucose was in the lethal range. Those are not words you want to hear while you're in your underwear in a hospital bed, which you've been strapped to for seven days. Just saying. Uh, yeah, it's this idea that like, yeah, our weight is partially in our control, right? It is partially a function of what we eat, how much we exercise. But it's this idea that because we have some control over it, that it's okay to treat people like shit because of it, right? And it's sort of very similar to, have you tried not being gay? Has anyone in here tried not being queer? No. <laughs> I did, I did for a little while. It didn't stick, right? Which you can probably tell. Uh, but I mean, it's very similar arguments, right? For people who think that being any form of, of queerness is a choice, it's the same principle. Well, it's okay to treat you like shit because you could just choose not to be this. Womp, womp. So how do you deal? Like, your internalized nerd shame, I don't really, like, I'm what I call five minutes of, or five seconds of Googling gay. If you have my first and last name and a search engine, you can figure it out <laughs> within about five seconds. Uh, I still look both ways when I'm home visiting my parents before I walk into a GameStop because I don't want to have that conversation. Oh, hey, guy that I knew in high school a really long time ago. Yeah, I do still play video games. Yeah, I bet your kid really does love Call of Shooter, Halo, Duty, Battlefield, the Tron 5000, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> no, Nintendo isn't a noun in the way that you're using it. You know, like I just, <laughs> <laughs> that whole nerd shame thing is very similar to internalized homophobia, right? Like back when I kind of cared whether or not people knew I was gay, uh, internalized body shame. I will tell people I'm, I, the word gay is easier for me to use than the word fat, emotionally. It takes more emotional energy for me to say, yeah, I'm fat, which we'll get to, trust me. Uh, and also, being a gay man, being fat is really hard. Because what if, I'll be honest with you, I've occasionally had to look in the mirror and go, would I fuck this? In my case, the answer is no. I'm not really into me. Like, this is not the body type that I am attracted to. Uh, the way that that can destroy you emotionally, believe me, it sucks. <laughs> because you hear, okay, I'm not what I find sexually attractive. 
gay male culture kind of puts a massive emphasis on being sexually attractive. Therefore, I have no worth as a human being. Uh, I was on Growler for like a week. <laughs> I didn't even bother with Grinder. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even try. I read Douche Bags of Grinder, and I was like, nope. <laughs> Noop, 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 not try this. Right, so as all of y'all know, finding a community, like finding people who are like you is a way to survive, right? Like it's probably the best survival strategy. You're like, oh God, I'm not the only one. <laughs> Other people deal with this too. Um, however, how many of y'all heard of the show Looking? How many of you have actually seen it? Oh good. For those of you who haven't, prepare to be educated. So <laughs> Looking is a show on HBO, and it is about three guys in San Francisco, three gay guys in San Francisco, one of whom is a game designer, but those writers don't know what a game is. Uh, <laughs> in, in the words of my friend Mark, the main character who's supposed to be a game designer is like a level three graphics tightener. Like nobody, like nobody really knows what he does. He's like doing 3D modeling all the time, and I'm like, but don't, don't but design it. No, that's not how that works. So anyhow, I'm gonna show you some pictures that happened in the first three minutes of the first episode of Looking, which used to be on YouTube, it's not there anymore. Um, this is from HBO's description of the show. The trio's story is intertwined and unspooled dramatically as they search for happiness and intimacy in an age of unparalleled choices and rights for gay men. Also important to the looking mix is the progressive, unpredictable, sexually open culture of the Bay Area, which I just want to follow with available now on the App Store, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> download now. All right, so seriously, first three minutes, the guy on the left is, yes, the guy from, the voice of the guy from Frozen. John, Jonathan Groff, yes? I don't know, names, celebrities, whatever. So he's talking about Gabe, who is the husband-to-be of his recent ex. And his friends are with him, and they're outside of their apartment. And they're like, is Gabe hot? He's a little portly. And all three of them laugh. That says both, but I, apparently they don't know how to count. Right, so... <laughs> which is not an insult, it's not an insult. And this character's like, oh my God, you're such a bitch, <laughs> right? Not, oh my God, you're such a bitch, right? Like, not the invective, like maybe you shouldn't say this awful thing. It's like, oh you. <laughs> no, he's a very sweet guy. He's just slightly round. They're talking about that guy who's not even TV fat. <laughs> I have clothes bigger than this person. <laughs> If you Google him, he has profiles on talent agencies and they're like, his body type is athletic. I'm like, yes, that might be a soccer or football player. That's not portly. If it's round, I'm pretty sure they mean his head. <laughs> He's not even, I don't even know, right? And like, I just, uh, okay. <laughs> How many bears we got in the room? Don't lynch me until the slide is over. I think bear culture is in many ways awesome. Y'all are like, I don't have to be defined by your like the advocate cover consumer culture, tiny thin gym rat twink tanned thing, right? It's like I can be all of this and feel sexy and that's awesome. Here's the problem. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, and seriously, don't not all bears me, because just don't, right? <laughs> uh, sometimes bear culture gets just as body policey as mainstream gay male culture, and it sucks. It's the worst. And I had an extended period of, Miss Bryce Dews in the front row will back me up. Uh, we were in a WoW guild together that had a lot of bears in it, and they were a little aggro about their body politics. And they were super into labels. And I eventually just cracked shouting at one of them once, right? Like, okay, so there's bears, but then there's cubs and bears, and then there's otters, but then there's wolves, and then there's silver wolves. And I'm like, does that mean you collected enough wolf points? Do you eventually become a gold wolf? <laughs> um, I was like, how many animals do you have? None of this makes sense. And my experience with many of the people who were kind of into the sub-labeling thing is that you were into your label and that's it. 
right? Do not leave your box. And I'm like, that's not what I signed up for. I was like, I wanted to feel good about my body and maybe feel like somebody might want to have sex with me sometime, which is not a thing, thank you, which is not a thing, <laughs> not a thing gay male mainstream culture was giving me. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna make my own animal. I was like, okay, I'm relatively intelligent. I'm sort of cute. I like to swim. And if you feed me, I will do tricks. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm an orca. Bam. And so now those of you who follow me on Twitter know why I post pictures of orcas all the time. Uh, <laughs> so just, so that was kind of like an intro to why d being a gay man who was fat and like sometimes people are like, oh, but there's bears. So we don't have to treat fat people, fat gay guys like they're people, right? And I'm, I've talked to lesbians, bisexual people, all sorts of people in the queer spectrum. And I was just like, do you have this body bullshit and, you know, and dealing with it in your life too? And they're just like, the speed nod, right? Like they, they can't nod fast enough. I'm like, slow down. You are gonna get whiplash. <laughs> Please don't hurt yourself in my account, thank you. Um, what does this have to do with video games? And everyone's just like, I thought this was supposed to be Gamer X. Not just Whiny X. Um, <laughs> So fat gay fat not fat gay characters. Well, maybe Wario. Uh, <laughs> and Waluigi. I'm just saying. Uh, we got King Hippo. We got Wario. We got Fat Princess. Um, some guy from God Hand whose name I don't know, but I'm pretty sure is Elvis. Which <laughs> uh, is it, Elvis? Oh, good. I win. Right. Um, this is not the best history, and this is just like. There's a giant bomb list, which I, I really hope is by a user and not the actual staff uh, of fat characters in video games. <laughs> um, fat Man, who's in the lower right-hand corner uh, from Metal Gear Solid 2, his entry in that list is, he was mad about being teased for being fat when he was a kid, so he became a terrorist. And I'm like, did you play Metal Gear Solid 2? <laughs> he became a terrorist because he's out of his mind. Yeah, which could be hot if they're not actually explosive. Like water balloons, you could do a thing with water balloons. <laughs> Learning too much about me, all right. <laughs> but these characters kind of reinforce this conception that we culturally have about being fat, that we're gluttonous, that we're food obsessed, that we're lazy, that we're unnatural, right? Because all, almost all of those characters except for, oh, no, wrong way. <laughs> We'll get to it, we'll get to it. Uh, except for Fat Princess, most of these characters are not sympathetic. They're evil, right? Or at the very least, mischievous in a way that you are not encouraged to be, right? Like, <laughs> please don't do Wario things, I'm just saying. Um, and also the kind of this reinforcement that fat can never be beautiful. For people who've never actually played Fat Princess, she is one uh, woman as token, as trophy, right? Hey girl. Um, <laughs> and I made Anita Sarkeesian choke. Win! Um, <laughs> but, like, you, she's the tower in a tower defense game, and you make her the tower by stuffing her face with cake, and it's weird, right? Like, I'm gonna make you ugly and super heavy so that the other team can't just carry you off. Oh, it's the worst. I know, same face. I made the same face. Like she's, her only like vaguely redeeming moment is that she's playable in PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale with cheese. I don't forget the whole name of the game. Um, but like she has this great moment where she rides a chicken to kill people and is just screaming, chicken! And I'm like, yes! Get it, girl. Um, that's kind of her revenge, right? She's just like, I am not. Not. No more. Um, another good example of this uh, from, oh, now I forget the name of the game. The Suda 51 game that was like, came first and it's a guy and about his wife and nobody played it. But <laughs> this, this Beauty is Blind is a story about a, a woman you kill in the game who was an overweight opera star and uh, she kills herself because she can't be beautiful and the reason she can't be beautiful is because she's fat. Womp womp. Yeah. Uh, also, seriously, I'm done. I'm so done with this nonsense. No more fat people using farts offensively.
Wow, yeah. fart didn't get a laugh? I do like you. <laughs> it's not funny, screw that. Um, okay, so I wanna show you, Keynote hates to show this video. Let's see if I can actually make it happen. That totally worked at home. Nah. Has anybody seen this video before? Are you dreading? You should be. You should be. That trailer is super gross for a lot of reasons. Two fat guys meet coming into and out of a bathroom in a restaurant. This is not the setup for a joke. It's the premise for this trailer. Well, okay, I guess it could be both. Uh, seriously, I just, so do people know those characters? Rufus from Street Fighter Four and Bob from Tekken? I kind of like them, actually. Like, Rufus does straight up kung fu, like, Bruce Lee kung fu. Like you saw him, he's like jumping off walls, he does spinny kicks, he does martial arts that is not like I am sumo, right? Which, can you think of any like kind of really big hefty fighting game characters that are not just like, I hug you to death now, <laughs> right? And I, like, my hugs are pretty epic, not gonna lie, but they're not lethal. Um, and they're not joke characters, right? Like they're, they're, do people know what I mean by a joke character in terms of a fighting game, right? Like they're just kind of there to be, huh? Yeah, and Rufus was, for you fighting game nerds who are not watching the Evo streams right now, like Rufus was, Rufus, are you really watching it on your phone? That is the worst, I'm standing right here, bro. Don't tell me that. Um, leave, get out. Uh, Rufus was really high tier when Street Fighter 4 came out, like Justin Wong, who's a very, very, you know, popular, very skilled fighting game character, used him, or he's not a fighting game character, he's a fighting game player. There is a difference, and I do know what it is. Um, <laughs> he used him, right, like he used him in tournaments for a really long time, right? So they're not joke characters, they're viable, they're usable. Um, and they seem pretty okay with their bodies, right? They're not just like, oh, I'm the worst, but at least I can punch people real good. Um, on the other hand, Rufus is kind of portrayed as delusional and gross, right? Like, did you hear his line? He, okay, so his deal is that he, th he's a ri he thinks he's Ken Masters' rival. Uh, Ken is just Ryu, but blonde. Um, and he thinks he's Ken Masters' rival, but he never, he just thinks anyone who's a blonde guy who can do martial arts is Ken, right? So he thinks Bob is Ken, and he says midway through, and Bob's just like, I'm not Ken, what's your deal? And Rufus actually says the line, you said, you thought if you couldn't beat him, join him and got a cool body like mine, right? We're supposed to laugh at that line. If you know anything about the way these things are written and the tone of the joke and the voice acting, we're supposed to think that's hilarious, right? I don't. I think it means if he feels like he has any self-esteem, then he's delusional. And that happens to fat characters all the time, right? Um, 
I was here for the Gearbox talk at the very beginning of the conference, and I was, uh, I had not played, I'm a bad friend to Anthony, and I had not played Borderlands far enough to get to Ellie. Sorry, Anthony. Um, and so I kind of, I had a chance to talk to Anthony Birch, who's a writer for the Borderlands series about Ellie, and uh, he said, like, I really intended for her to be this character who's okay, you know, perfectly okay with her body and feels good and feels attractive. And I watched some videos of content that she's in, and I was like, yeah, I can see it, right? Like, he told me this great moment where these bandits that live around her in the Borderlands world have made hood ornaments that look like her, and they're supposed to be jokes, like making fun of her for being fat. She's just like, no, I think they're badass. Can you go collect some of them? And I'm gonna put them around my house. <laughs> and then you do it. You come back with them and put them in her house. And like, the hood ornament is her doing this. <laughs> and she's just like, no, it makes me look like an eagle with a great rack, right? <laughs> I was like, nah. But she feels good about it, right? Like, but part of the problem is then there's this like scene. I watched a YouTube video of her in some DLC where they give her the slave Leia bra and she puts it on. And she's like, I've never felt so hot. That was kind of cold in here, <laughs> right? And she's literally wearing it. The, the model is wearing it. But the video was two dude bros playing the game and I had to hear their dude bro laughter and jokes the whole video. And I was like, this is where it falls apart. And I, I think they had the best of intentions. They really did. They wanted to make Ellie this character who feels really good about herself. But the problem is that sometimes when you do that, they come off as delusional, right? Like, oh, it's all in your head. You couldn't possibly feel beautiful because look how fat you are, right? Rufus, totally like that. Bob, not so much. Like, I think Bob feels pretty good where he is, but he got fat as a handicap. Sigh, right? I was just too good at martial arts, so I got fat for a challenge. <laughs> uh, although I will give Tekken this. There's a slim Bob unlockable in a couple of the games who's weak, like <laughs> the worst. He is a joke character. Slim Bob is useless. Um, so kudos to you, uh, Namco, for that. Um, and also Bob's moves are named after food. Don't do this. Don't do this. I think about things other than food all the time. Just really. Uh, how many of you played Pokemon X or Y? How many of you want to put it together for Tierno? When the best fat video game character I've ever seen was in a Pokemon game by accident? <laughs> it's a sad state of affairs, y'all. But look at him. Like, he's, he's fucking tearing out, you guys. Like, he's clearly okay with his body. If you haven't played Pokemon X or Y, he never once is just like, oh, I'm so fat. Do these Pokemon make me look fat? <laughs> And part, of, and part of me is just like, maybe you shouldn't have like a Clefable. It's very small compared to you, but no, you look fine. Um, his friends, who include you, like the, the player character, right, never comment on his body, right? They're never like, ha ha ha, you can't be a Pokemon fan, or look how fat you are. Um, he's into a physical thing, he likes to dance. He's into a physical thing that might be a challenge. This body does not dance. New. No. Uh, but he's into it and he's good at it and people recognize that he's good at it and they think him wanting to do it is legitimate, right? He's fat, but it's not his central characteristic. And we're never asked to think that he's delusional. We're never asked to think that he can't do any of the things that he wants to do, right? That's fantastic. Uh, to give you another example, because I have like nine minutes, sorry. Um, so Saints Row, how many of y'all are Saints Row fans? I'm a huge Saints Row fan. I recognize it's got some problems. <laughs> Everything I like has some problems. I wonder what that says about me now that I think about it. Um, but for those of you, maybe, for those of you who were at the uh, inclusive game design panel, um, there was someone from Volition who was here to speak, and she said a lot of pretty good things about the way that they approach character generation in Saints Row, that you can make pretty much anyone. And when they say anyone, you can make well, within a range, right? Because there's only so much you can do when it comes to character generation, right? I get that. Um, but you have, you have a pretty wide range of body types, you know, a pretty wide range of skin tones up to and including metallic silver. Just saying. Um, 
Creative advertisers have their downsides, right? Like, and for people who've done some of the Bioware panels, you know, like if you don't, if you don't author it in, if you don't make people play it, uh, Christine Love had some pretty good stuff to say about that, right? Like there's value in making somebody play a thing that they're not. And, and as she said, it kind of gives the permission to play around in the role that they don't normally accept, right? But on the other hand, it gives people like me a chance uh, to do this. So this is my lady boss. If you follow me on Twitter, you know this already. Um, she is pretty big. I put her about as far to the fat side as you can get. Not completely. Um, I actually once loaded up an old Saints Row game and I had a really skinny boss and I went, what happened? <laughs> like, and you can go and get immediate in-game plastic surgery to fix this problem, right? And I was just like, no, more weight. No, no, farther, farther, uh, until I was happy. Um, Lady Boss lets me live my dream, which is dressing in awesome clothing, right? Um, I can wear anything I want, anything. Uh, for those of you who've never been fat and shopped for clothes, it sucks. Uh, I can shop at more, m about three places in the whole United States. Some of them which are mail order, right? Um, <laughs> my trip through the dealer room, <laughs> no, like no disparagement on any of them. I know a lot of them carried some pretty big sizes, but I'm just like, oh, your gaming shirt is super clever and it would maybe fit on my hand. Sorry, right? I pay about 125 to 150% of the cost of normal clothes for everything that I buy, including shoes. Um, I own like three pairs of shoes and now you know why. Uh, and a lot of the time it's just being uncomfortable, right? Like, well, I can't look like I really wanna look, so I'm gonna wear this, which is close enough, but sometimes it's pretty uncomfortable. Uh, in Steelport, I can wear whatever I want. It will always fit me. I will always look amazing, and that's fucking fantastic. Um, just to give you a little sample of my wardrobe. Um, I color coordinate my weapon skins to match my outfits. <laughs> I have a purple plaid shotgun and you could too. Um, to put this in perspective, I then made a Saints Row boss, well I went and got plastic surgery, immediate plastic surgery, to make me. Um, I could also wear these things, I won't. <laughs> well okay, I do own one of these. Uh, Can you get to guess which one? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, and there are some, you know, there are some issues with Saints Row's character generation, the, the, the female models can never quite be as large as the male models, and they're always gonna be a little idealized figure-wise. Um, the male models are always kind of built. Uh, fat, non-lady boss me has a six-pack, and I'm just like, <laughs> of beer. Uh, so just kind of to sum this up, being fat has a lot in common with being queer. It has a lot in common with being a nerd. It means you're different and it means people are gonna give you shit all the time and you just kinda have to live with it in a lot of ways. Um, a lot of what we see fat characters do in games is what we see them do in TV and movies, right? They're gluttonous, they're evil, they're lazy. It's their fault. It's okay to treat them like shit because it's their fault. And if they like themselves at all, they're delusional. Uh, so what can games do? Can I have a space where my body does not matter for like five seconds? That's ten. Five seconds, please. Thank you. Um, tell a respectful narrative, right? Don't reinforce our negative cultural ideas. If you're thinking, wow, this is kind of like what games could do to better represent queerness. Yeah, that's not a coincidence. It's the same thing. Uh, what can we as queer people do? We need to rethink the way that we think about other people's bodies and especially the way that we talk about other people's bodies. Don't let I'm not into that turn into that person's gross, right? I'm gonna tell you this right now. We can see it in your eyes. We can see it on your face. Your initial reaction, I'm sorry, editorial you. I'm not saying anything about all y'all in this room, right? But when I see somebody who's like, he's fat and that's gross, I can immediately see it. It's right here. It happens all the time. It is the number one microaggression of my life. It sucks. It really sucks, <laughs> you guys. Um, we need to support each other instead of police each other. It is okay to be, like, why do we do this to ourselves? We're like, it's okay to be any type of queer you want, but if you're fat, you're not a person. I've had that discussion with our WoW Guild, sorry. 
Sorry, Bryce. Like, I had that. Like, people were like, oh, God, fatty, is my right? And I'm just like, yeah, God, it's like we want to be people or something. Um, <laughs> if you're a game writer, designer, maybe don't pull that bullshit like they did in Looking. Thank you. Um, and honestly, body images about fatness hurt non-fat people too, right? The fear that you might get fat polices thin people in ways that I cannot describe. Right? It is the root of so many eating disorders, of so much harm that non-fat people do to themselves. And it's because we have this belief that being fat is the worst thing that could ever happen to you. Right? Also, if you're not fat and you have fat friends, don't say things like, oh, I'm getting so fat. I will literally body check you at this point. <laughs> And, oh no, no, come back. Uh, I have like one more thing. Um, yeah, uh, for, what is it, force is mass times acceleration, right? Uh, it's not coming back, is it? No. Fine, well I'll just read it off to you. I can do words. I words real good. Um, <laughs> So this focus that only thin can be beautiful hurts thin people too, right? And remember, thin people aren't the enemy. Body cultures that hurt us and police us are the enemy. Don't hate the thin people unless they're being jerks, and then that's more or less okay. Um, so that's my talk. I had one more thing before they literally pushed me off the stage. Uh, so some of you may know, um, I crowdfunded my ticket here because I'm recently unemployed. Uh, I just wanted to thank these people, who are my funders, if we could give them a round of applause. Without them, I would literally not be here, in fact. I would be back at home, probably crying. Um, so, and not just thanks to them, thanks to everybody who shared the link, who, pushed out that message so that people funded it. It was funded in the first day. I've never been so humbled in my entire life. Also, could Ms. Jason Toops please stand up? <laughs> Toops is my fellow host on Game Bar. He is hosting me this weekend. So again, without him, I also would not be here. Um, and I'm completely out of time. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're done. You don't have to. That's super nice of you, though. Um, I know we, we have like, this accessory is not supported by this iPad. Yes, it is. I just used it for like 45, whatever. Sorry. Um, <laughs> whoo, uh, so thank you guys for coming. I know we don't have time for questions, but I will totally talk to everyone out in the hall because I know they want to get this room ready for another stuff. So thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it.